Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Berlakis, presenting case 237 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of a retrograde crossing of an LAD CTO using an ipsilateral septal collateral. The patient was a gentleman who presented with uh, progressive dyspnea, which is commonly an antigen equivalent, he had normal left ventricular function, ischemia in the anterior wall, and coronary angiography showed heavy calcification and occlusion of the medial AD with a blunt proximal cap that was uh, very close to a septal branch. There were some collaterals coming from the right coronary artery, epicardial collateral coming close to the distal cap, and there were also some ipsilateral collaterals. This is a large septal that gives a septal to septal ipsilateral connection, filling the LAD close to the distal cap. So the patient was referred for CTO PCI after failing medical therapy. The initial attempt was done with um, undergrade techniques. The wire went into the extra plug space. This was uh, not in the lumen clearly, but it is dancing with the vessel. We were able to deliver a stingray balloon, distal to the distal cap, and then did multiple attempts for the entry using the double blind stick and swap technique. However, despite those attempts, we were unable to re-enter into the vessel. So we create a knuckle and then we perform balloon angioplasty throughout the length of the vessel, but there was not uh, a very nice result. There was not really good undergrade flow. The patient continued to have symptoms and returned two months later for a second attempt. This time we have ephemeral, eight friends, EBU 375 gives us strong support and also a radial, six friends for the right coronary artery because we thought it was unlikely that we were going to go retrograde uh, from the uh, epicardial collateral coming from the marginal branch. So we have a relatively short CTO but has a blunt cap with heavy calcification a distal cap at the bifurcation of the diagonal, and has a septal to septal and an epicardial collateral from the right coronary artery. Given the previous undergrade failure, and given the complexity of the lesion with a JCTO score of three, our plan to use a primary retrograde approach through the septal to septal collateral. This is a Corsair microcatheter coming into this large septal. We can see the connection. It is a fairly small and highly tortuous collateral. We advanced it further down. We used uh, a different score for assessing the difficulty of crossing this collateral. There, there is a J-channel and the CC score, the collateral channel score. This is from Taiwan and it's fairly simple. It has to do with the vessel size. Large is 1, small is 0. And the vessel tortuosity, if you have no tortuosity, you get 2 points. If you have tortuosity, you get 0 points. And if you have uh, uh, 1 point, uh, you're okay. But if you have... Uh, two points or more, then the likelihood of success is lower. Similar parameters for the J-channel score. It looks at the size, the presence of tortuosity with a reverse band and a continuous band and a corkscrew morphology. And if it is more than three, which it was four in our case, the likelihood of success is low. So we knew this collateral was a challenging one. Having said that, we tried with a SUO or three guide wire, which is less traumatic but that had a difficulty advancing. Then we switched for a soft polymer jacketed wire, a Sion Black, which seemed to advance along the course of the vessel. And actually, we did advance our microcatheter, which retrospectively was not the right thing to do, because then we took a little picture and we saw that we had perforated the collateral. But fortunately, because this was a septal collateral, the perforation was draining into a cavity. We can see that because the dye is clearing very quickly. And uh, if it was an epicardia, we'd be much concerned, but here we were much less concerned. So the question at this point is whether to continue the attempts or just abandon the ipsilateral retrograde attempt and try undergrade. We decided to give it another try. We went back with the SUO3, which is um, soft and less traumatic. It takes a gentle rotation. And then eventually, um, following the breathing, there is movement of the guide wire along this area of tortuosity. And now the guide wire seems to be advancing along the course of the collateral vessel, going towards the LAD. 
This was confirmed that we were in the LED, and then we were able to advance the Corsair microcatheter, and now we do have the Corsair into the septal close to the distal cap. This is obviously now a very powerful position to do our retrograde crossing. We used um, a Gaia Next 2 retrograde that seemed to advance uh, partially, but uh, we had uh, difficulty advancing it further. Then uh, we used the Gladius Mongo, both in the anti-grade direction and in the retrograde direction as well. And typically for LAD CTOs, we advance a guide extension into the mid-LAD or the proximal LAD so that there is no inadvertent subintimal or extra plug entry of the retrograde guide wire in the left main that could compromise the vessel. But in this case, uh, the retrograde Gladius Mongo, once we did the reverse card, uh, seem to advance very easily throughout the LAD into the second guide catheter. And we didn't bring a second guide after removing the right guide because it's much easier to have two separate guides than to try to externalize through the same guide catheter, even if it is an 8 French guide catheter. After we externalized, we now have crossed the lesion, but we need to stand further down because the LAD continues past the origin of that septal branch. So we used a dual lumen microcatheter, this is a Sasuki, along with a workhorse guide wire that easily went down the course of the LAD. We predilated, and then very importantly, before standing, we remove the retrograde guide wire. We never want to trap the retrograde guide wire because this can be a critical complication. We might uh, need uh, emergency surgery to remove the equipment if the retrograde guide wire gets trapped. So we were able to place uh, a stand into the middle LED, then a stand into the proximal LED. And this provided a nice result. We have actually pretty much all the branches there. There is uh, the diagonal at the distal cap. We do have a bunch of septals. So very nice result. We did intravascular ultrasound, which is especially important because of the calcification. And that seemed to improve the area of the vessel. So this was a nice final result, and this case uh, did uh, give us some good lessons. The first one is the power of the retrograde. Doing retrograde crossing is important. It does significantly increase the success of CTOPCI. In this case, the undergrade failed. We could not do the reentry, but the retrograde attempt was successful. The second thing is the retrograde also can lead to less loss of side branches because we can minimize the extra plaque crossing segment. And in this case, we did maintain our diagonal, we did maintain our septals. However, the retrograde also has complications and one of them is the risk of perforation. In this case, we did have a septal perforation. However, the septal perforations are much safer than the epicardial because Typically, the blood drains into a cavity. And sure enough, the blood here was draining into the, into the cavity and did not require any specific treatment. And what we were able to do is go back and try again with a soft wire, a SUO3, and successfully cross again. And actually, at the end, the perforation was sealed after advancing the microcaster and doing the retrograde approach. In terms of the retrograde approach, this uh, can happen through septals either from the left to the right, which is the most common, or from the right to the left, which is less common. And what is even less common is to go from left to left. So there's a proximal septal here and a distal septal, and we're able to go from septal to septal. And then what we had to do in this case was to do a reverse cart, externalize the guide wire, and then use a dual lumen to advance an undergrade wire, and before placing stents, we remove the retrograde wire. We do not want to jail a retrograde wire or microcaster. We want them to be removed prior to placing stents. Thank you.